Good morning. Uh, my name is John McGinley. I'm on the staff team at Holy Trinity, if you don't know me. And it's great to be speaking to you from the passage we've just had read uh, from uh, Ruth chapter 3. As Chris said at the beginning of this uh, service, we are looking at the whole of the book of Ruth. It's just got four chapters in it. Uh, I'd love you to read it. You'll find it in the Old Testament, in the Bible. And uh, it's just a fantastic story. As he said, we're calling it Summer Lovin'. Um, I really wanted to see his impression of John Travolta. I think he could have gone a little further, uh, Chris, but I'm definitely not going anywhere near there. But that's, we're calling it that because it is a love story. And it's a story of hope. And today we're thinking about redemption. If you haven't been following the story, let me just introduce where we find these two central characters of Naomi and Ruth. Uh, what's happened is that Naomi and Ruth are poor, they're vulnerable, uh, they are without a hope and a future. And this has happened because Naomi and her husband Elimelech um, left Israel. They gave up on God when the famine came and they went to Moab. And, uh, and in that place, their sons were born and they married Moabite women, one of whom was Ruth. Now that's against the, the law of God and it was a symbol and a, and a sign that actually they'd given up on God. And then tragedy strikes. Elimelech dies. Then Naomi's two sons die. And so Ruth is widowed. And in a patriarchal society where all the money and wealth is held by the men, that means they're left with nothing. They both return back to Israel. And as they come to Israel, they're refugees. They have no home. They have no family. They have no income. And they're left to um, literally scrabble around around the edges of fields to try and get enough grain to eat every day. They need a redeemer. That's what we're thinking about today. This idea of a redeemer is somebody who rescues, who buys back, who, who reclaims and recovers something that's got lost or has got trapped. You may not know the story of Ruth, but you know the stories of redemption. This is a Cinderella story. This is from rags to riches, Cinderella can't rescue herself, she needs a prince. This is a sleeping beauty story, trapped, unable to escape, she needs a, a prince. This is a Richard Gere, Julia Roberts, um, a pretty woman story. This is the need for somebody who is vulnerable, unable to save themselves, unable to redeem and rescue themselves, to have a rescuer. A redeemer. And what we learn from this story, which is so good, such good news, is that there is nobody outside of God's redemption. There is nobody who is outside of God's reach, outside of his love for them. Everybody can be rescued and redeemed by God, and that's what we're going to look at later. But let's get into the story. Ruth has met her prince, Boaz. He's a, he's a distant relative of Naomi's, and uh, he's a wealthy farm owner. He's a godly man. He's a good man, and he has already uh, protected Ruth. He's already fed her. He's already provided for her as she's gone to his field. And we see in him that he's been following the ways of God as he allows uh, those who are the aliens and refugees to, uh, to take grain from the edges of his fields as the law in, uh, in Leviticus commands him to. So he's a good man. And Ruth has met him. And in this moment, we discover the first person in this story, in this chapter, to be redeemed is Naomi. Naomi had been given up on, on following God and trusting God. And after the tragedies of the deaths of her family members, she blamed God. She became bitter against God. But in this chapter, we discover a Naomi who has chosen to come back to God and has chosen to trust him. Because what she begins to see is that the fact that Ruth has gone to Boaz's field isn't a coincidence, it's a sign of God's hand. What she begins to discern is that God is with them and giving them a way forward, and inviting them to step forward into his solution for their desperate situation. As she realises that Boaz is a member of her family in this strange term, a guardian redeemer, a kinsman redeemer, which we'll look at in a moment. It gives her hope that God is with her. And in this story, Naomi is an example to us of what we need to do. If you've ever been in that situation, if you're in that situation today where you think there's, I can't find a solution, I don't know the way forward, 
I, I don't know if I have a future in this area, then Naomi is an example that God is with you and he will open up a way ahead for you. But what you have to do is what Naomi does, and that is to act, to step out in faith on the basis of the signs of God's leading you and on the basis of God's faithfulness and his goodness that you can be sure that he is with you and he won't let you down. That's such a hard thing to do. For Naomi, what she comes up with is a plan. She talks to Ruth and she says, Boaz is, is a relative. He's a, he's a, he could be our kinsman redeemer. And I think that the fact that you're in his field is, is God's hand. And so what I'd like you to do is this, Ruth. I'd like you to have a bath. I put some perfume on, put some nice clothes on. And then I want you to go to the threshing floor, to the threshing barn. This was where all the, the, uh, the grain that's been harvested is put into this barn where the wind blows through. And as they thresh it up, the, the chaff gets blown away and the grain is left and they harvest the grain. And all the men of the, of the village would, would bring their grain to this place to do this. And so she says, Boaz will be there tonight. And after he's, he's collected his grain, after he's eaten, he'll be tired, he'll go to sleep. And then you're to go and you're to lie down next to him. You're to uncover his feet and wait for him to wake up. And when he wakes up, you're going to have to play it by ear. See what happens. Let's see if God might be with us. You see, this is, a, this is a, an action that is full of risk and vulnerability for Ruth. She chooses to do it, but she's going to a place where all the men are going to be of the village. It's late at night. She's going to lie down next to a man that she doesn't know very well, and she's going to make herself vulnerable to him as she says, here I am, here I, am. I, want, I want to marry you. This is no guarantee of success. But Naomi and Ruth choose to do it because they see something of the hope and possibility that God might be providing through Boaz. For you and I today, Naomi and Ruth are an example to us. We have to choose to step out in faith when God invites us to step forward into what he's providing for us. It can be so hard because there's no guarantees of success. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes it doesn't even make sense. But if they hadn't stepped out, then, then the solution that God was providing would have been missed. And if you miss what God has for you, then it's not that he will step away from you, but you will have missed stepping into the way forward that he's providing. And I've seen a number of people who are so scared of making the wrong decision that they make no decision. But they're so scared of, of taking the, the wrong way that they go nowhere. And the result is, is that they end up in the waiting room, constantly waiting for the way forward. And so often they're there because they want a guaranteed future. They want to know that it will work. They want to, it to all make sense and to understand it all before they step out on what God's giving them. But I'm afraid, friends, that God invites us to live by faith. And so if you're in that situation and he opens something out, he's asking you to step out in faith. And it may be that you're not even in a hole, as it were, but you've ended up in a place like Naomi, where you've decided that you're only going to uh, find your solution to this. You're not going to trust God. You're going to give up on God providing and you're going to play it safe and you're going to keep things under control and you're going to make your way and you're going to find your way in this. And everything becomes shut down. It becomes limited and restricted. The flames of faith grow cold. We're refrigerated in this waiting room. And our lives don't begin to exhibit any of the supernatural. God is calling us to live by faith. Not to be in control. Not to be under our, um, our sort of solutions. But to follow him. And so today, it may be that the redemption, the, the bringing back to, to life and reclaiming of, of God in your life, is that you're going to come back to God and say, okay, God, I'm sorry. I've been playing it safe. I'm willing to step out. Would you please show me how I can do that? And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be exactly what Elaine has just been saying. I'm going to sow some money into the future of Holy Trinity because I believe God has a future for our church and I want to be part of it. I'm going to sow some prayer into the future of the church and into my life because 
I believe God has a future for us. And I'm going to risk praying for somebody for healing because I believe God is a healer. I'm going to risk uh, taking care and sacrificing for somebody and loving somebody sacrificially because I believe that God has enough for me and I can give to others. It's these things that when we, we feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit and we step out, that's how we're called to live. That's the life of faith we're called to live. And Naomi learned the lesson. I'm giving up, she said, trying to have my solutions. I'm giving up looking in the wrong places for what I want to get out of this life. I'm going back to God and I'm going to live by faith and I'm going to step out on what he has for me. And I, I genuinely think it's better to step out in faith and get it wrong than to play it safe, under control, and never do anything for God. The Bible tells us that. I don't know if you know that. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. He's saying, you lean on your own understanding, under control, and in, in your uh, solutions. Then you're almost guaranteed to miss the will of God. But if you'll trust him, and trust him in all your ways, and he'll make your path straight. Even if you get it wrong, he says, if you're doing it in prayer and trust, then God will work it for good and get you to the place he has for you. It may be a bit messy, may not all be perfect, may take time, the path doesn't feel straight, but that's how we're called to live. John Wesley said, he said, I'd rather have one person on my team that sometimes I have to cool down and just bring back than 10 men who I have to continually warm up without any enthusiasm. We're to be people who are living by faith. Naomi is our example. She comes up with this plan. Ruth is her, our example. She steps into it and she goes to the fresh, fresh and floor. Boaz wakes up. He says, who are you? And you think, well, don't you know Ruth? She's, you've met her already. Well, Maybe it's just it's the middle of the night, and he's startled. I don't know what you're like in the middle of the night. I'm terrible. I get completely disorientated. I wake up, I go, what? And then, if you ask Bridget, I'm also really grumpy. She says it, it reveals my true nature. I wonder if he doesn't recognize Ruth, because it's also the anonymity of women's clothing in, in that uh, part of the world at that time. We need to understand, this was no plan of seduction. Ruth is not wearing seductive clothing, trying to uh, seduce Boaz into something um, that is inappropriate. Now, what she's doing is she's just presenting herself to Boaz. And this is what she says. She says, I am your servant, Ruth. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are my guardian redeemer of my family. And that's basically her saying, would you marry me? She's vulnerably presenting herself to Boaz. And in that moment, the second person is redeemed in this story, and that is Boaz himself. He has been faithfully following God. He's been honouring God's ways. And yet, he has no wife. He has no children. And he says to Ruth, the Lord bless you, my daughter. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after younger men, whether rich or poor. In Ruth, she is God's redemption for him. She is the wife that he's been praying for. She is the hope of children that he hasn't yet had. And sometimes, as we follow God, we don't have a way to step forward. We have to wait. And Boaz is the example to you if God is calling you to wait at the moment, that God is faithful, that he hears our prayers, and that he still has good things planned for us, even though we don't know when or how they will come to us. Ruth was his redemption. There's a story, a phrase that we have in our, in our, in our language, which is, uh, it ain't over until the fat lady sings. But it ain't over until God speaks his word over your life. The doctor doesn't have the final word. The exam board doesn't have the final word. The company or the boss doesn't have the final word. Um, your, your, the people who have spoken words of discouragement over you don't have the final word. God has a final word in every situation. And sometimes we have to wait to find it. Sometimes we have to wait to see what he's going to do. But 
Boaz's example, as he receives Ruth as his as his wife, is it's worth waiting. God is faithful. And sometimes our act of faith is to wait and to follow God's ways and to trust in him while we do so. And finally, Ruth is redeemed. Ruth, hey, as Boaz say this, it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family. There is another who is more closely related than I. Stay here for the night. And in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. But if he's not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Or I says, I will marry you, but I have to do it properly. And the rules of this system need to be fulfilled. So what's this guardian redeemer? The guardian redeemer is a male relative who is given the privilege and responsibility to act on behalf of a relative who is in trouble, danger, or need. The Jewish law stipulated that the, um, the Hebrew term goel for guardian redeemer designates one who delivers or rescues or redeems property or person and who can be called to marry the wife or the widow of a family member if she has no sons to provide for her. The guardian redeemer, the kinsman redeemer, is the hope and God's provision for those who are left in poverty. And here Boaz says yes to Ruth's request. In that moment, everything changes for Ruth. She has a family. She has a future. She has hopes of children. She has financial provision. She has property. She has a home to live in. Everything is transformed. She is redeemed. The hope of that is given to her by Boaz. I want to say that if we're in difficult situations, the God's solution is that he will speak. He will comfort you. But so often, it's his solution is just like with Boaz, is a person, one of his people, filled with his love and the Holy Spirit, who he will send to bring the support and the way forward that God has for you. So if you need that, pray for that person and look for that person. But if you're able to offer it, and particularly in these really challenging times of COVID, why don't you Offer that to somebody else. Who is God calling you to be a friend to? That's really what the story of Ruth is about, the power of friendship. What We all need friends at this time. I know that I'm standing well today because of friends like Elaine and Martin and Pete. I wouldn't be standing well today without them. Who do we need to be friends to? Who's God calling us to bring something of his redemption and support and love to? The kinsman redeemer had three qualities. A male relative who has the means and the ways of being able to redeem and that they are willing to fulfill this role. Does that remind you of anyone? God establishes this in order to protect the vulnerable. But he also establishes this system which there's no equivalent of in any other culture at the time of Israel in order to prepare us to recognise what Jesus came to do. Jesus is your guardian redeemer, your kinsman redeemer. He fulfills all of those qualities. He's a relative. He came, God himself came and lived among us as a human being so he could be a member of the human family. In Hebrews 2.11 it says this, Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. For Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Jesus is our brother, come to redeem us, a member of our family. Secondly, he has to have the means. He dies on the cross. Paul writes to Titus, Our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his own. Jesus came and gave himself on your behalf on the cross so that you could be forgiven and brought back into relationship with God. He showed that he is willing to do this for you by doing that for you. And he now stands before each one of us today saying, I love you and I long to redeem you. So if you don't yet know him, then he offers you exactly what Boaz offered Ruth. He offers you a restoration to a family, God's family. He offers you an inheritance, eternal life. 
He offers you the resources of his love and his presence day by day. And he offers you a hope and a future as you follow him. If you don't yet know him, I'd encourage you to reach out, as Ruth did to Boaz, and say, yes, Jesus, I need you. I need your redemption. It's not just that we are saved forever, but what Boaz illustrates of Jesus is that there is nothing at all in our lives that cannot be redeemed. That God wants us to know that he's with us and he wants to bring redemption to marriages, to relationships between children and parents, between our finances, our work situation, our education situation, and the things of our lives that we are struggling with. There is nothing that Jesus can't redeem. But if we're going to receive that redemption, we have to follow Ruth's example. She came and she laid herself at the feet of Boaz and said to him, Here I am. Would you marry me? Would you restore me? Would you redeem me? And for us, as we go forward in our lives, as we come to Jesus, we have to say, I'm giving up doing what Naomi did, trying to find my own solutions, my own ways. I recognise my need of Jesus. And so I come to you, Jesus. I kneel at your feet and I ask you to redeem me. And so as I finish, I want you to kneel with me in a moment, if you're willing to. As, Naomi, as Ruth laid at Boaz's feet, we're going to kneel at Jesus' feet. And each of us might say something different to him this morning. You might say, Jesus, I don't know if you're there, but if you are, I know that I need God and I need his rescuing today. Would you please come and rescue me, redeem me, save me, please? Maybe we need to say to God, <clears throat> I'm sorry I've been trying to do it my own way and find things in my own solutions. I'm coming back to you. I want to live by faith in you. I'm coming back. I'm available to you now. I want to find your way. I'm willing to step forward and to follow you. Or maybe is there's a situation that really does need God's redemption, and you're saying, actually, God, I'm bringing this to you today. Would you please redeem that? That person, that situation, I need you, please. So would you join me now in kneeling at the feet of Jesus? And then I'm going to give you time to pray your own prayer. And then I'll pray for you. So just come before him <clears throat> and pray your prayer in silence now. Oh Jesus, thank you that you are our Redeemer. Thank you that you gave everything on the cross for us so that you would have the means to redeem us. Thank you that you are alive and you reign over all and nothing is outside of your love and your redemption. We praise you and we thank you. I pray for each person now as they kneel before you and I ask now that Holy Spirit of God, you would fall upon them, upon these hearts that are crying out to you, upon these embers of faith upon these new fresh dreams and hopes that you would come and meet them in their challenges upon people who are opening their heart to you for the first time i ask now come holy spirit release your peace release your presence release a sign that you have heard their prayer and impart to them father a gift of faith as we've seen from naomi and Ruth, to trust you to follow you and discover how you will work your redemption in their life for your glory's sake. So you might want to stay kneeling while we sing together, um, but we're going to just use this song, God, I look to you, as a way of just confirming what we've just prayed. So let's worship together.